It's day three aboard the Disney Wish. And we're headed to meet someone special. It's Nassau down the Disney Wish, and once again, we are not getting off the boat because we have a royal engagement this morning. Also on the docket for today, we're going to check out the Rainforest Room. So excited about that. Maybe get a little pool time, some more cocktails, tasty food, including dinner at Palo, which we've never been to on the Wish, and it's different here. Super excited about that, too. We got a lot to do, but uh, we can't be late for royalty. We can't, we can't. We gotta That'd be so embarrassing. Yeah, it would... Who are we, Alice? Let's go. The rabbit, the rabbit. The, yeah, what? Yeah, we gotta go. Yeah. We are headed to our royal gathering in the Grand Hall. This is a really fun character experience with multiple of the princesses, typically three, and you don't know who is gonna be there till you get there. What's unique about this versus the other normal character meet and greets on the ship is that this one you have to reserve in advance. It doesn't cost you anything, but there is a capacity for how many guests can do it. You can sign up 30 days prior to your ship setting sail, Big shout out to Kim at Be Our Guest Vacations, our travel agent who booked this trip for us because she got up at midnight to do it for us and I awoke to an email that said, hey, you're booked for the Royal Gathering. I've never done this before. I've never been able to book it or I've always forgotten to book it. Uh, but it looks like it's Rapunzel, Cinderella, Belle, ooh, Moana. Uh, for uh, the greeting before ours, so we'll see if they remain out for ours. Yesterday when they were doing it, I saw like the royal callers come out and do a little show too, so who knows what's going to happen. Not me, uh, except for I do know we're going to talk to the princesses. Alan, who's your favorite princess? Probably a tie between Belle and Tiana. Two great choices. What about you? I, growing up, always loved Belle and Mulan, and now as an adult, I think Mulan is the winner. Mulan is awesome. She's just, she saves China. What should we ask for? I mean, any number of things. How's their sailing? Can Are they in the them, royal suite? Can we ask them their favorite food on the, on the cruise ship? Sure. I want to know who likes chicken tenders. I mean, the royals are truly like us if they enjoy the tendies. Is it Moana? Is it Hayden? Go on. Oh, no. <laughs> Four princesses in like two minutes. What'd you guys talk about? Food. Oh. I have recommendations. Okay. Um, Rapunzel says to try the cupcakes at the market because Attila made them and they're sublime. Okay, love that. Um, Cinderella told me to find Jacques and Gus Gus because they know where all the cheese is. Good, yep, that's priority one. That is important. Yeah. Um, Belle told me to ask Lumiere for some gray stuff because it's delicious. Okay, we can do that. And Moana told me to watch out for coconuts because they could be pirates. And it is pirate night, so to watch out for all the coconuts. Uh, Which makes sense. I'm, I'm sensing a lot of like fruits and desserts here. Yeah, nobody likes chicken tenders. It's kind of sad. Maybe they haven't had them. Princesses, if Now you're that's watching, truly a crime. If you're watching, come with us and we'll give you chicken tenders. Blink twice for tenders. Beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. Bring them back to your royal suite. Overall, the royal gathering was super cute. If you've got little ones or anybody that wants to meet the princesses, set those alarms for 30 days out at midnight Eastern time because that was really efficient. You guys would meet four princesses. All the princesses were phenomenal. They were all super personable, sweet, friendly. Uh, the way they do it is really efficient, passing you on. You scan your little card with the photo photographers and just a really well executed experience. <sighs> With all this Tinder talk, though, my uh, my belly's rumbling. Mm. Can we head up to Marceline Market and, you know... I want a waffle. I want some coffee. Mm. Yeah, I need some coffee. Meet you up there. Marceline Market is the buffet option here on the Disney Wish, and it is open for breakfast and lunch. It's actually really cute in there because all the different stations and bays are themed to different characters. <sighs> I'm excited. It might just be because I'm hungry, but I'm also excited. 
It is absolutely adorable in here. I could spend an hour just looking at every little sign, every little detail, and every little window box. We're eating in Maurice's, for, uh, Belle's father, in his section, so you can see like the gears and some of his schematics and designs. There's a little Remy section with one of Remy's recipes and Gusto's book. There's uh, stuff from Attila the Hun. His bakery is called Attila the Bun from Rapunzel, and it's really cute because it's got like baking stuff, but then also his weaponry. <laughs> um, but my favorite part in that section is his book Anyone Can Bake, which is definitely a Remy uh, Ratatouille reference as well. There's also a really cute Zootopia section. You might remember Judy Hopps' parents are uh, bunny farmers, so there's some references there, including the special of the day, carrot on a stick. You've also got one of the gourmet coffee shops here. It's Alice in Wonderland themed. I love the teacups on the wall as well as this wallpaper, which just looks like regular wallpaper. So you look closer and there's hidden Alice in Wonderland characters in it. One section is the witch's apple orchard from Snow White. So all the products on her shelves are different apple products like flowers, flower market from Bambi. Like just everything is adorable. I want to scream and, and beyond even just the adorable details, I like just the layout and the design. It's very open, it's very modern, it's very bright in here. Um, it's definitely a good place to kick off your morning with some delicious breakfast treats. And there really is no shortage of food options here. You've got hot stations that serve you everything from eggs, bacon and sausage links to eggs benedict and flan. You can pick up the classic Mickey waffles, as we all know Molly did. And you can even go to cold stations, get things like cereal, maybe add some oatmeal, you can get some pastries, bagels and lox. It's limitless, which you can grab here, and the variety is nice. And certainly something not to miss, at the rear of Marceline Market, you actually have a place where you can pick up some fresh fruit, as well as make a custom omelet, should you so desire. All told, what'd you get? I got a Mickey waffle off the kids' corner because anyone can order from the kids' corner <laughs> um, with some strawberries and syrup. I also got what they called a flan. I would call like a quiche. They had a couple different varieties of these. This is a sausage and cheddar, a little strawberry smoothie, as well as some fresh fruit, and of course, coffee. And me, myself, and I, I picked up Raisin Bran because I actually am a weirdo who likes that cereal. Embrace your elderly tendencies. My elderly tendencies. <laughs> Old people like Grace and Brand mm. and Alan. Mm -hmm. uh, for the old and old at heart. Uh, so <laughs> we have, I picked up a yogurt parfait as well with granola and fruit. I also picked up a quiche, a sausage link, and coffee. Now this might just be round one on my end, but it's a good place to start. And fun to point out, there are several drink stations around. One thing that does make Disney Cruise Line unique from some other cruise lines is that soda is included um, with your cost. So we're right by a beverage station. You've got different varieties of juices, sodas, teas, coffee. Um, and as a pro tip, you can always bring a big cup if you want to refill your soda or something to take out to the pool deck. But they have more, they have more bars out there. But. You want to see something adorable I just saw? So behind, we, uh, uh, no. so, so behind you, the chandeliers are pots in reference to Mrs. Uh -huh. Potts. That's cuter than me. <laughs> I didn't say that. And does not involve our guests. Oh. Attention assembly stations, you know golf, this is just hotel, as as we got it. and Zulu 2. Please proceed to your side, life raft launching area. Thank you. How was your sausage? It's good sauce. Happy to hear it. Whatever this is, flan or quiche, very good. I thought flan was dessert. Like when I think of flan, I don't think of an egg. Quiche, sausage. A flan is still an egg custard dessert. That's true. Mmm. Oh. You think this is in that house? That house? Mm -hmm. The most successful <coughs> conch fishery. There's coconut on top of my smoothie. Moana warned me about this. It doesn't seem like it's a pirate though. The main reason I prefer not to get off in NASA is this right here. Look, we're on the adult pool deck and there's literally no one in the whirlpool. Is that because you'd have to listen to the same line from the Aqua Mouse over and over again? Perhaps. But is it because most people get off the boat? More likely. So if you are looking for maybe a little more pool time, not getting off the ship at somewhere like Nassau, which maybe you've been before because a lot of Disney cruises go here or there was an excursion that particularly excited you, may afford you a little more quiet pool area, not just here at the uh, adults area, but at the kids and family pool too. Might see a shorter line at the Aqua Mouse, which is the water roller coaster. But for me, I'm hoping just for a shorter line at the bar. We picked up some of the Wishes' signature beverages, the Pop Fizzes, 
Molly got her favorite, the strawberry basil, and I decided to try the cucumber honeydew, which I have to say, I'm very much enjoying. But that's probably just because it's a gin and tonic with a cucumber honeydew popsicle in it. Big fan. I'm also a fan of this view. Now, granted, we do have a fantastic view of the Carnival Elation, but I do like looking out over Nassau as well. Uh, and I can't help but be drawn to one of my haunts as a, as a younger person, Senior Frogs. Oh my. Oh, the yardsticks we've seen. Do you hear that? What? Uh, it seems like over on the big screen they're playing The Lion King. Ah. Uh, and Mufasa just died. Spoiler well, alert. Well, and honestly. I, and I, I heard the stampede. I heard him screaming. I uh, heard brother help me. And then I just heard, Dad, get up. Is it worse hearing it without the visual or? Oh, it's bad no matter what. Okay, got it. Cut you deep no matter how many times. Now we are headed to the Senses Spa. This is the adults only spa section of the Disney Cruise Line. And you can book things like massages, facials, and other treatments, or you can do what we've done, which is book the Rainforest Room. This is a very luxurious kind of cruise line, best kept secret. Um, it's a beautiful room with different showers, different um, saunas, you've got whirlpools, uh, different scents, and it's just, it's a lovely, it's like the most relaxing thing you'll ever do. Originally, when we were talking to our travel agent about booking this cruise, she said that you had to book it on board but then they actually became available to book in advance so she went ahead and did that for us we booked a length of cruise stay package for 239 a person so yes it is significantly more than being on the magic but that's because the rainforest room on the wish offers a little bit more day passes are sometimes available day of only if there is space available they run for 79 dollars per day and the busiest day for this is day at sea and then obviously that gives you access for your whole cruise versus just one day. Had the most beautiful and relaxing luxuriation session at the Rainforest Room. And now we're back up on Deck 11 at Mickey's Festival, rather Festival of Foods, where you've got the five little kiosks all serving different items. And why go to one Festival of Food when you can go to basically all of them? Alan got a burrito and I got a taco from Donald's Cantina. We know those are amazing and they have maintained their freshness and deliciousness. Got a smattering of hot sauces from there as well. But we also are trying the arugula and uh, prosciutto pizza from Daisy's uh, Pizza Pies, as well as uh, some barbecue from Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue. Got some brisket, mac and cheese, coleslaw, pickles. I'm gonna make some kind of Frankenstein monster of deliciousness here. I went and filled up our Nalgene's with our beverages. As a pro tip, if you don't want to use the reusable glasses, bring something like this, a Nalgene or the cups that we've used on other cruises, because one, it carries more, and two, good for the environment, folks. You guys already know Donald's Cantina absolutely slaps, so let's move on to the pizza. Unfortunately, the pizza is pretty mid. I think if you got pickery eaters in your party, it's the place to go. The prosciutto pizza was okay. It was nice to have the prosciutto to add a little bit of saltiness and richness to the pizza, and the arugula added some earthiness, but overall, it was just a mid pizza. And made a little concoction at Mickey's Barbecue, the brisket on the macaroni and cheese with the pickles and the coleslaw and some of the barbecue sauce. Honestly, this is the way to consume Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue. The brisket's not the best I've ever had, but it is smoky and delicious. The mac and cheese is fine on its own, but much better when you add some of the other ingredients. Love the crunch from the pickles and the slaw. Still not my favorite, but pretty good. But the best part, of course, is finishing with some ice creams from Minnie's Sweet Treats. I got blueberry and vanilla, and Alan got mango. Went back to the room, changed and freshened up, and now we are headed to Spas. Just because the Galactic Star Cruiser is closing does not mean the lava business is... Okay. Okay, first of all, now I'm sad again. This is the whole, like, Mufasa, or, or I'm sorry, Scar tried to kill his brother thing. We got some people we can talk to on the wish about some lava. You True. Know what I mean? There is still movement within the lava business. If that wasn't clear, we're going to the Hyperspace Lounge. Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge acts as the Skyline Lounge on the Dream and Fantasy or other Disney ships where it has a rotating screen that takes you to different locations. But instead of this being on our planet, uh, this is in space. The whole family is welcome here until 9 p.m., but after 9, it does become adults only. You know, it's at times like these where I'm reminded of the Star Cruiser, and I'm very sad. Yeah, it was awesome. I'm sad it's gone. I wish that they have the cocktail menu in here. <laughs> That'd be a really good addition. Really easy, too. Anyway, I'm just going to keep watching Space Go Is that by. a race? Uh, unclear. The space race? Nailed it. 
Speaking of the menu, there are a number of cocktails here that represent different regions in the Star Wars universe, or different planets in the Star Wars universe. You have Batu, Mustafar, Coruscant, the moons of Endor, Tatooine. Lava. Oh yes, Mustafar does have lava. Found it. There's also some very pricey souvenir choices, including a coaxium box, which is 400 credits, but you get this thing. And then there's also a kyber crystal uh, cocktail. It's $5,000, but you get a trip to Lucas Farms. So, you know. Yeah, the pros and cons. They also have two beers here that you can't get anywhere else, not even Galaxy's Edge or uh, the theme parks at all. They didn't even have these on the Star Cruiser. There's the Batuan Harvest Brew, which is a an ale with some f uh, floral and fruit notes. And then there's also the Mustafarian Black Ale, which is um, oh, it's inspired by the lava planet. Interesting. Our drinks have arrived, and Molly got something from Coruscant, known as the Chancellor, and asked that our... Wonderful bartender Kirk add a smoke bubble on top for her. I picked up from Tatooine at the Freetown Reserve, and inside you can just barely see peeking out uh, an ice cube of Darth Vader's helmet. So big. Ooh. That's good. Now, Captain Kirk here behind the bar told me that this would be like a sidecar, and it is. It's got the Hennessy flavor, it's got a little bit of a salty flavor almost too, which might have been part of the bubble. It's not super sweet, a couple of these beverages look really sweet, like the one with lava in it looks really sweet, which is why I didn't get that one. Sweet lava. Um, a little bit tart, can't really taste the alcohol, but it's a good cocktail. This reminds me a little bit of an old fashioned. It feels like the spin on old fashioned, it's a double oat whiskey. Um, Subtly sweet, not overtly so, but I really enjoy that. The space version of an old fashioned with the Darth Vader helmet. I'm a fan. In a goblet, no less. Was that the Falcon? Yeah. I know space stuff. Now, Alan, the last time we were here, I told you the story of Star Wars, the original trilogy. I I'm, recall. I'm here today to tell you about the new Star Wars trilogy, um, and everybody loves it. Everybody that is a fan of Star Wars loves this new trilogy so much, they think it is just chef's kiss perfection it, uh, two of the films were directed by the writer of Armageddon J.J. Abrams okay start with um, a young girl who I like to call Space Khaleesi right, they, they meet up with Indiana Jones and the big furry bear and they have to save the planet from Indiana Jones's son Moody Snake getting a little long-winded, so I guess the other important things to mention from the new much-beloved um, and most revered trilogy of the Star Wars um, saga is that Princess Cinnamon dies. It's very sad. We love Princess Cinnamon. You know what? The thing is, this music reminded me, I haven't said the most important part of all. The bear finally gets his medal. Which leads me to my next oh my point. <laughs> about how Star Wars is just a bear story. A fun fact for you, one of the scenes on the viewfinder here in the hyperspace lounge takes you to Coruscant. And located just on the exterior of orbit of Coruscant, you can see the Halcyon, the Galactic Star Cruiser. Now there are tons of Easter eggs hidden throughout the hyperspace lounge, but here are a few of my favorites. First is the Halic Set, which is a musical instrument similar to a guitar from Naboo. You have a hollow tube that showcases different holographic ship models, including the ghost from Star Wars Rebels. And right now it's displayed as the ship from Star Tours. <laughs> and if you're looking at the screen now, the Halcyon is huge on our viewfinder, but that's not the only ship that sails across. You also see X-Wings and, and the Millennium Falcon, amongst tons of other ships. At the back of the bar you'll find a whole host of decanters that house all of the various liquors and liqueurs from across the galaxy. But by far the most important artifact are these Mustafar lava crystals. What are you, what are you doing? What is, what's happening? You can't, we can't take those. No, no. They are, we have legal business dealings. Under the table business. Nope, very le no, you can't, no. I'll be back for that. Okay, no, we won't be back for that. We can't steal it in front of people, we'll be back. We are not going to steal it at all. Right. Don't wink. Allegedly. No. 
<laughs> well, we had a fun time at the hyperspace lounge and strolling about the ship, but for Paolo, we gotta get changed. There's a dress code, people. This is not part of it, so uh, see you in a minute. That's better. Yep. Let's go to Paolo. Yeah. Well, first, the rose. And then Paolo. Yeah. Made it up to deck 12. This is where the adult only dining is. Again, Enchante, where we went for brunch, and Paolo. I just love the artwork coming in here. All three venues up here, Enchante, Palo, and The Rose are all loosely Beauty and the Beast themed. In the artwork here, you see some nice drawings of the characters, Mrs. Potts and Chip, Madame Wardrobe, looking fabulous. Absolutely love this rose right here made out of book pages and the magic mirror. And then here inside the rose itself, you're gonna see this beautiful, wow, the view is stunning right now with the sun, uh, but you're gonna see the rose and the filigree and the ironwork. And uh, this is again an adults only space. So you're able to come up here, get some fancier cocktails. They have some nice champagnes. They do one cocktail called the rose, which is a $50 cocktail. We got it last time, but I think I'm gonna try something new this time. Oh my gosh, even the ceiling is rose. Oh, gorgeous. So if you're gonna do Palo or Enchante for dinner, I highly recommend coming up here for a little pre-dinner cocktail to set the mood. Taking a look at the cocktail menu, the Sweet Rose immediately caught my eye, made with Emperor's 1920 Contro and Grapefruit, as well as the Mrs. T that I had before the last time on The Wish, but once I saw the Crazy Old Fashioned, I knew what I had to go with. The Crazy Old Fashioned is composed of five trail blended American whiskey and Bon Moment Intense Cherry, and it was an incredibly good Old Fashioned. A little bit sweeter than I would normally go for, but I was also told that it had an exclusive dried orange dipped in chocolate put on top that is only found on this Old Fashioned, and it was very tasty, and it made me want to order another Old Fashioned just so I could have the orange. And I went a little off menu. I told the bartender that I was in the mood for a champagne cocktail, but nothing too sweet, so we ended up making one with champagne, tequila, and grapefruit, and it was fantastic. This is my friendly reminder to you that if you don't know what you want to drink, talk to the bartenders. They will be able to custom make you something fantastic. And then it was time for Palo. Palo is the Italian steakhouse aboard the Disney Wish, and the way that Enchante is loosely themed to Lumiere, Palo is loosely themed to Cogsworth, which you'll see throughout the artwork in the restaurant as well as some of the design will have circles to represent his cogs and gears. Also, like Enchante, there is a dress code. Basically, you want to look a little bit nicer than you would in the classic dining room. So dresses, slacks, you don't need to wear a tux or anything, but you certainly can't wear things like flip-flops or your bathing suit or sports attire. As a pro tip, make sure you book the earlier seating at Palo because then you'll be able to see the sunset and it is stunning. As far as the menu goes, Palo does have a prefix menu that is $80 per person and allows you a more limited menu to select from for your meal. And unlike brunch, there is an a la carte menu that you can choose from, which is what we did for dinner. As far as the antipastis and zuppas go, there are a variety of things to choose from, including the famous fried calamari and antipasto. They then offer a selection of salads, pastas, and their iconic pizzas. For entrees, there are a variety of land and sea options, as well as some vegan selections. But what sets this Palo location apart is its carne section, because it is Palo Steakhouse. Unsurprisingly, at an Italian restaurant, there's also a nice wine selection, and the sommelier or your server can help you pick out the perfect bottle to go with your meal. He chose a nice Italian red for us, and then it was on to the eating. We were actually started with an amuse bouche, which was a mushroom gnocchi with some fresh Parmesan on top. It was delightful. I love mushrooms. I love the earthiness of them. The gnocchi was cooked perfectly, nice and pillowy. That nutty cheese on top. Honestly, if this was an entree, I would order it every single time. The bread service arrived and it was always tasty because we love carbs in this house, followed by the baby arugula with virgin olive oil, white balsamic, and Parmigiano Reggiano. Is this my favorite thing on the menu? Absolutely not, but it is a darn tasty salad. You can really taste the earthiness of the arugula counterbalanced with the acidity of the white balsamic, and it's very, very nicely balanced, along with a little bit of the bite from the Parmesan cheese. The beauty of this dish is that it is so simple and it allows the individual flavors of all the components to shine through on their own. Now, the only thing that could distract me from the most gorgeous sunset outside was the arrival of a Palo Pizza. We went for the Bianca Ricotta that has mushrooms, arugula, and truffle oil. 
oh my goodness, we had this aboard the Magic and it was one of the best pizzas I've ever had. And it was again on the Wish. I don't know how they get the crust so perfectly crispy every time at sea, but they absolutely do with that imported Italian flour. I love the light cheese flavor. It's a white pizza, so it's not super heavy. You've got the earthiness from the mushrooms, a little zest from the arugula, and just enough truffle to make you feel indulgent. Next up was the steak, and we selected the Japanese A5 Wagyu. It should be noted that steaks on their own do not come with sides. Those are order a la carte, so we picked up the roasted mushrooms as well as the mashed potatoes. There's also a wide sauce selection that can come on the side of your steak, and we picked up the pink peppercorn sauce, the reduced wine truffle sauce, and the gorgonzola cheese sauce on the side. This was my first time ever enjoying a Japanese A5 Wagyu steak, and it was unmatched. It melted in your mouth. The marbling across the meat was exquisite. It was lightly... Don't you mean exquisite? No, I'm, I mean exquisite. Exquisite. Still, still not right. It was exquisite and lightly seasoned with salt and pepper. A perfect sear. I don't know the right words in the English language to describe how fantastic this steak was. I have to agree. The steak didn't even need any of the sauces. It literally melted. It was absolutely fantastic. Also fantastic though, the mashed potatoes. Simple deliciousness, whipped potatoes with butter and cream and chives. They were a perfect balance to that very rich steak. And those I really enjoyed putting the gorgonzola cream sauce on. I enjoyed the mushrooms, which were a delightful complement to both the steak and potatoes. I actually enjoyed dipping that into the truffle and wine reduction. They're just a delightfully earthy bit of roasted mushroom. Very simple, not a lot more to add, but they were a great compliment enhancing other parts of the dish. Next, we were presented with the dessert menu, which features the signature souffles, both chocolate and amaretto. There's also a hot chocolate bar, panna cotta, a cheesecake. You can select gelato or go with a cheese course. I went with the six layer carrot cake, which I had never had before. It was a huge piece of carrot cake with lemon cream cheese and candied carrots, and it was very good. I tend to like carrot cake as someone who doesn't love super sickly sweet desserts. Um, however, the cream cheese frosting can often be too sweet for me. That was not the case here. I loved the zestiness of the lemon. That citrus really curbed any of the other sweetness from that frosting. The cake itself was moist and delicious, and as you can see, it was absolutely gigantic. And just like on the Magic, I ordered the chocolate souffle. Now you will be asked about midway through your meal if you would like the chocolate souffle because it does take about 30 minutes to prepare. And I gladly said yes because I fell in love with it on the Magic. It comes with a Madagascar vanilla bean gelato, chocolate sauce, and vanilla anglaise. Folks, it was so rich, but somehow still light. The souffle absorbed all of the sauces and it was this beautifully cascady, almost lava cake-like texture where it was absorbed in the souffle. I adore this dish. If you are a fan of chocolate, then this is a must get. And we wrapped the meal with one final gift from the chef. This was a raspberry gelato and limoncello, almost frozen style shooter. It tastes like a slushy or a smoothie, absolutely delicious. This would be a frozen cocktail I would drink on the poolside. Love the tart raspberry and lemon and a perfect way to end the meal at Palo. Once again, Palo was incredible. I am so full, but it was so worth it. Our server Carlos made excellent suggestions. And while the only difference with this Palo is its extended steakhouse section, so the carne section of the menu, the steak we had. Run to your mind. I will, I, 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 I'm at a loss for dream. words. I will dream about it. Um, for days and days. And uh, I think Palo is my favorite restaurant, period. <laughs> oh, end of statement? End of statement. Wow. It's so good. Every High time praise. we go, <laughs> highly, highly recommend a visit to Palo if you're an adult and you're a foodie. Yeah. Everything is phenomenal from the service to the view to just a phenomenal experience. It's incredible. But now mm. it's pirate night. Arg. Crushed it. Ahoy. <laughs> also good. Avast. We got to get ready at our pirate <laughs> outfits. That's the one. See you guys soon. That's so much better. That's very cozy. One of these days we're gonna go full pirate costume. Oh, I, if I do that, it's it's Jack Sparrow and I need eyeliner. I will do this for you. But uh, today it's pirate's hoodie and shorts. And for me, it's pink shirt and shorts. You saw this outfit earlier today. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't. Anyway, 
Pirate Night is a tradition on the Disney Cruise Line. They do a cool show that actually has fireworks at sea. All the characters are dressed up in pirate costumes. And here on The Wish, the beautiful chandelier in the atrium is pirates themed. It's really fun, so we're going to go have a yo-ho, rootin', tootin', plundering good time. Avast! Cannonball! Boom! Avast! And now we're headed up to decks 11 and 12 for the Pirates Walkin' Parlay Party. This is a really fun rock show with some pirates. And then this is when you have your fireworks at sea. They're amazing because they're to the Pirates of the Caribbean music. And uh, the show varies a little bit on the different ships, but I tend to like the music on this one more. So let's go. go, go. Pirates of the Caribbean score might be my favorite movie score of all time. It's a fair assessment. And it's so fun to see fireworks at it. And it's like, how are they putting them over the ocean? I mean, they made, Disney of course made like special fireworks that don't pollute the ocean or harm the sharkies. Um, but it's just really, really cool and a must see when you're on a Disney cruise. Absolutely. And one thing that I noticed this time is that the band that's out playing throughout the show stays on to play the score that the fireworks are shot off to. Which is wild to it's me. It's a live Pirates of the Caribbean score. Claudus Belt coming at you. Yes, Claus Badelt. Claudus Claus. Like Santa? Anyway, it's a great show. You should absolutely see it. And the pirates are fun. They rock out. Pirate Night in general is really fun. I love that Disney does this theme night. And I'm happy you're on the Halloween cruise because we got two overly theme nights, which is yep. very exciting. And speaking of two overly theme nights, we have a little more Halloween fun this evening. Um, well, first, we're going to go watch the musician play in the piano bar, Nightingales, because mm -hmm. who doesn't love a little live music? And then in one of the movie theaters, they're playing Hocus Pocus because this is a Halloween cruise. So going to go see Hocus Pocus on the big screen, which mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever done. Never done it. Because I was like very little when it came out. I yeah. agree. I'm, I'm excited to get there. So, folks, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials. If you want to join in the conversation about this or any other video, do so on Discord. The links for all that are down below. Let us know if you've gone on a Halloween cruise or what your favorite Halloween movie is down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. Bye.